So today we're going to discuss and practice an incredibly simple yet highly effective technique to empower you to cultivate a sense of calm amidst the chaos of everyday life. So our story begins about 200,000 years ago when human beings suddenly came into existence. Interestingly, we didn't, didn't evolve from Cro-Magnon man as everyone previously thought, but we did actually coexist with them, but we did not evolve from them. So we know this now because because now we can do gene therapy and gene analysis from very old fossils to determine as far as the, the path of the genes as they went through the years. So what happened was kind of interesting. What they found is that about 200,000 years ago, two genes were suddenly fused together to create humans. Okay, this wasn't a random act of nature you know, as, as Darwin would say, you know, the theory of evolution, because the theory of evolution uh, talks about adapting to one's environment between generations, but this didn't, this didn't happen that way. This just happened all of a sudden, and the odds of something like this happening are so infinitesimally small. In other words, it's like one in 10 to the 600th power or 0.0042% that something like this could happen in a random chance that that human that humans could be made. I believe it was it's gene number two, I think, which makes us different than uh, a lot of the other animals. So the odds of this are so small, just to give you an idea, this would be like if you walked out of your front door tonight and there was a 747 airplane sitting on the street in front of your house and you climb into that airplane and it takes off on your street and flies you to Europe. Okay, so that's about what the odds are that something that this could have been a natural selection of uh, or creation of our genes. So really the conclusion is that our genes were consciously manipulated. So I <laughs> so I guess that means we're all GMOs, right? <laughs> so anyway, um, so there had to be some kind of intervention and th this is and this is also supported by every single ancient religion. They all have a story that humans were created through some type of intervention, through some type of higher source. Um, it's now also supported by science because we have this extensive knowledge of of genes and how they work and all that, and and we're able to to determine that uh, and analyze these genes. Like, you know, if you remember from Jurassic Park, how they said they would take the little DNA out of a, of a dinosaur fossil or something, and they were able to create dinosaurs. Kind of like that. They can take genes out of very, very old uh, living uh, beings and things and look at those genes and the DNA within that gene. So it's a very interesting technology that we have that shows that we did not evolve as everyone thinks we did. So now let's fast forward today to scientists. And Scientists are researching ways that they can store data within the DNA, which is kind of interesting. And so uh, a few years back, Japanese scientists were able to store a message in DNA of bacteria. So what the message they stored was E equals MC squared. And I think it was 1904, the, the year that Einstein uh, discovered the theory of relativity. So they put this message into a DNA of a bacteria. And then they let that bacteria progress a, a hundred generations. And then they went back into the DNA and the exact same message was still there. It, it went through a hundred generations of that bacteria and they could still read that message E equals MC squared. So that was kind of interesting that they could do that. So they're now looking at ways that they can use, you know, uh, DNA and, and genes and things to store information, almost like a new type of hard drive that would store things indefinitely within, as long as that being or entity is living, that that message would stay within their DNA. So now Greg Braden, um, who you probably all heard of, he, he's been doing a bunch of research on the subject of hu human origins. And he was a, is a geologist and he was wondering, you know, did someone, Whoever or whatever manipulated our genes 
to create humans, he was wondering if they left a message for us. You know, could they have, as they did that 200,000 years ago, could they have said they, um, could they have left some kind of message for us, some, some note or something that would last for hundreds of thousands of years? And he wrote a book about this called The God Code, uh, which is very interesting if anybody ever wants to read it. So also in Greg's life, he studied many of the ancient languages of Sanskrit, Hebrew, Arabic. These are some of the first languages. There's a few more, but they've been lost and we don't really know where they are. But what he found in these languages was he found that the letters also had specific numbers associated with them. And nobody really knew what those numbers were and why they were there within those alphabets of all of those three different languages. But after years of research, Greg found a very interesting similarity. He found that the atomic mass of the elements that make up our DNA correspond to the letters in these ancient languages, which was kind of interesting that he was able to match that correlation. And it turns out to be a message. And interestingly enough, the message is the same in all three ancient languages, Sanskrit, Hebrew, and Arabic. And so this message appears to come from whoever fused our genes together 200,000 years ago. So it's kind of interesting that that would be there. And what does the message say? The message says, God eternal within the body. God eternal within the body. So this is very interesting that that it would say this. And you know, this is this would be in the terms of the old religion or the old languages of Sanskrit and Hebrew, uh, where they define, you know, as they define God in a certain way. You know, nowadays people say the universe, people say the infinite being, whatever that is. But for the sake of this discussion, let's just say God eternal within the body. Very interesting. So what does that mean? You know, so now let's take a take a look from a different point of view and, and other things. And, and you know, Rose, that uh, that uh, Hamid Bey reading was really great because he talked about the message of the heart, which is of the body. You know, so they say reason is of the mind, but love is of the heart. So you think about the mind, okay? We live in our minds all day long. We're thinking, you know, we have this constant, constant chatter in our minds. Uh, we even call it the monkey mind because it just never stops chattering, blah, 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 do this, do that. You're good, you're bad, and all that. Well, if you think about the mind, the mind has two sides. It's split in two. It has a left brain and a right brain. So in other words, if you're living and thinking in your mind, that you're going to see everything as good or bad, right or wrong. And there's always going to be an opposite or another. And, you know, and this is this is part of the problem in, in the world. It's always us against them. You know, they're right, they're wrong. This is good, this is bad. I hate this, I love this, right? So these are all these are all words of the mind, but we don't really ever go into the body that much, right? So today we're going to talk a little bit about using the body and using the parts of the body to, to go into that place, to step out of that incessant chatter of the mind. You know, when we think about it, the mind is like, um, you know, it's like a, a, a little kid. It's just always going and it's always saying to stuff to you. And you know what? We believe it. The mind says, oh, they said that. They said that to insult me or to embarrass me amongst my friends, right? The mind is telling you this stuff when you get caught up in this world of, of drama and, oh, he said, she said, uh, gossip. And it really upsets us and it just throws us out of balance because we're not living in our whole being as we were designed, right? Remember, God eternal within the body. So now let's look at the heart, for example. The heart is the organ within the body, and the heart is significantly stronger than the mind. Actually, it has a much 
higher radiation span, much more energy than than the brain does. But where do we live? We live in the brain, you know. Uh, but the heart is a single organ, and the heart is able to see things as one. It's able to see the unity in all things, you know. So spending more time thinking with your heart than in and your body will bring you more into oneness in the world. Okay, and we can still use our mind, but the heart and the body take precedence. But right now, in most of us, the mind takes precedence. So, uh, you know, think about that. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, how your brain or your thoughts will just control you. And the brains are not a good leader. They're not a good master. So we really want to take those thoughts of the brain and say, well, okay, Thank you, brain, for giving me those thoughts and giving me those ideas. But, you know, in this case, I just don't agree with you. And I realize that your thoughts are just driving me crazy. And I really don't want, I, you know, I accept you and honor you. But no, you know, in other words, you know, did you ever get that idea or people say, you know, I, it, it's a gut feeling, right? Those gut feelings are always so strong. And because the gut, the body is where, where we need to be. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And then we're going to do some exercises to see if we can bring our, our thoughts and in, our feelings into the body so that you can actually experience it. Uh, if you don't know what I'm, uh, what I'm saying, and if you do, that's good. You can take it to another level. All right. So Eckhart Tolle, he says that the body is a powerful gateway to presence. So his name for presence could be another person's name for God. You know, like, um, so Eckhart Tolle says the body is a gateway to presence. Greg Braden and the ancient scriptures say it's a gateway to God. And even science and our own DNA give us an ancient message, God eternal within the body. So you can use whatever you, words you want, but they all point within. And even what uh, what Rose read tonight about Hamid Bey when he said, you know, think with the heart, be with the heart, be with the body, and and that's where you where you find your power. So you think about the body, and people always say, "I have a body," right? In saying that, you're immediately creating, and you don't even realize that you're saying that you're separate from your body. But the truth is, I am a body. I am a body. You know, because it's the, the monkey mind doesn't want you to go into the body because it's, it's, it feels insecure. Remember, the monkey mind is always us against them. It's always a challenge. It's always everything's a battle. And so the monkey mind is going to say, oh, don't look over there. It's, that's not interesting. That's not what you want. You're wasting your time. Let's look at all this external stuff. You've got bills to pay. You've got things to do. Remember, you upset that person yesterday, and you've got to do something about it. You're a bad person. And it tells you all this stuff that the outside world is more important than the inside world. But we all know that change comes from within, right? That's what they tell us. But how do we get there, right? So rather than focus entirely on the outside world, what if we could save some of that awareness and have it for the inner world at the same time? And it is possible to be, you know, it's, you know, it's not an all or nothing thinking in the brain or thinking in the body. It is possible but to be in all of it at the same time. So you might say, well, yeah, but my body is sick, or my body is old, or or whenever I go in my body, or whenever I think about that, there's these memories, and they really hurt, because it was a really, boy, I was really had a rough childhood, you know, and somebody was mean to me, I was abused, and whenever I go there, it's just bad, and I just don't want to go there, right? Okay, so when you get there, if you're sick, or if you have aches and pains in your body, or something's not right, don't try to figure it out with the mind, because this is just a vicious circle that you're going to get in. It's like running the gerbil running on the wheel. You're going to be going on and on. It's a never-ending thing that you will never, ever solve ultimately. There's always something else. So 
don't don't say, well, I'm sick. I wonder why I'm sick. You know, because this is the mind leading you down a dangerous path. And it's doing that because it wants to maintain control. It's not going to easily give up control. So you have to be aware. And this is where consciousness comes in, to be aware of that mind and what it's doing to us. And so that we can take that presence and be in the body more. So if uh, rather than rather than just be with without an out of balance, you know, like if there's an out of balance part of your body or something like that, just relax and allow and accept it and allow it to flow. You know, if you have a headache or say you ate some funny food or something and your stomach is hurting, just relax and go within and just be with that feeling and just say, yes, I accept that I am feeling, you know, I am feeling discomfort. I am feeling maybe pain right now and accept it. And if you if things come up from the past, just accept them because those feelings of your past aren't going anywhere. But they, you can accept them and transmute them and rise above them so that they don't have that control, that grip, that sticking the finger in the electrical socket kind of feeling that you know that you get when you think about those things. So really work on accepting this stuff. Accept what's going on in your body, whether it's thoughts or mind. And if you can't really accept it, you know, but can't accept the the incident that happened to you which you know is very is very acceptable right acceptable but accept that you feel the way you do about it you know so in other words stop fighting yourself because when we fight ourselves that's where the disharmony comes in and that's what the brain is good at that's what the mind is good at oh yeah let's fight you know you're bad because you're or you're dirty because you were abused as a child you know you can never clear that up it's the original sin right so we want to let go of that stuff. We want to just accept it and say, hey, this is a part of me. This is who I am, and this is okay. So when we come into the body, we become rooted in being. And this is an intelligence that's far greater than the thinking mind could ever, ever be. Your heart and your body are so much greater. And... You know, uh, Hamid Bey talks about at some point, you know, if you have a problem that you just can't solve, to think about the problem before you go to bed and then just go to bed and forget about it. And when you wake up, you'll have an answer. Maybe not the first night, but you will. You know, we've all heard the saying, I want to sleep on it. Because when you sleep, you leave the mind and you go into your body. And that's where you can 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 realize and learn great things. Remember, God eternal within the body is the message from those that create whatever that is or whoever that is that created us 200,000 years ago. And that whole concept is way beyond the scope of this discussion tonight. So anyway, what does it mean to be aware of or in the body? Okay, so this is something that I can't tell you, it can't be said, it can't be put into words because it's a, subje a subjective thing, it's like a feeling. Like if you never had chocolate ice cream, and I said, tried to explain to you what chocolate ice cream tastes like, you're not going to know because you have to experience chocolate yourself. And as I'm saying this, you might even be tasting chocolate in your mouth because we probably all of us have had chocolate ice cream. So I can point you in the right direction, but you must go there on your own, okay? So now, as we, as we do these little exercises in a few moments, this is not something that, um, that you can exert effort to achieve or a goal that you're going to get. Rather, this is something that we can let go and allow to happen. And it should take no energy. If you're taking energy like... <clears throat> I'm trying to feel the body. Um, no, that's not it. All right. Uh, another aspect of the, the inner body that we're talking about, it's almost beyond the physical body. It's the life force within the body that I'm talking about. And this life force never changes. So it feels the same when you're 10 years old or if you're 80 years old. 
the God with the God eternal within the body is the very life that you are. Okay, so just think about that. There's some of you, maybe you're like, well, you know, I feel like I, I still feel like I was when I was 18 or 20. You know, I still do. And oftentimes I, I think my body still can do the stuff that it used to when I was uh, 20. So like if I go out and work in the garden all day, suddenly my body's like, you know what, you're not 20 anymore. <laughs> but that's not the part we're talking about. Not that part of the body, but that part of the, that part of the body that is the same as when you were a kid or whatever. So that's another another pointer that, that it is. Uh, something else about it is what I'm talking about is not going to be very strong. It's incredibly subtle. So don't expect fireworks, flashing neon lights, or a marching band with this. It's very subtle. You know, we've heard of the still small voice within. This is what the still small voice within is. It's the feeling of life within our body that we connect with when we connect through this. And again, remember, your mind is going to be saying, oh, this exercise is silly. You know, and it's going to do everything it can to keep you out of your body. It's going to be like, oh, yeah, you forgot to call somebody today. Oh, yeah, you got those bills to pay. You know, and if, if that happens, that's great. Just say, okay, you know, thanks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go. You know, and um, I like to say, like, if a little kid comes up to you and says, you're fat, you know, you're going to go, oh, that's so cute. Kids say the darndest things. But if your partner comes up to you and says you're fat, you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, I got your mind or something. You know, and so treat your mind like that little kid because it's going to say stuff like that to you and it will all the time so you always have to be aware that what the mind is saying to you and and treat it like that little kid you know because it is a little kid it's very underdeveloped and that's fine it's all part of our evolution and and such so now let's all just kind of get comfortable <clears throat> Kind of sit back and close your eyes. Put your hands in your lap. And I'd like you all to just bring your attention to your hand without opening your eyes and without moving your hand. Do you know that your hand exists? You know, just think about it in your mind's eye. Feel the life force in your hand. And as I said, it's going to be very subtle. It's not about feeling sore muscles or feeling your hand in your lap. It's about the feeling beyond that, feeling the pure life within that hand. And if, if you don't feel it, that's okay, but just allow it. I'll just be quiet for a moment and feel the hand. And then maybe feel the other hand also, but keep some feeling still in the first hand. And then the arms. And the torso. And the legs and feet. Feel that life force within your body. The life force that is there when you're three or when you're 93. It's the same life force. And this, when you feel this feeling, but you also are in your thinking mind and in the body, this is your natural state. This is, this is natural. Our normal state is in the mind, but this is our natural state where we, where we can be. 
So when you when you enter your body, you're stepping out of the identification with mental noise. Again, it's not something that you try to do. There's no effort. Just be it. Just observe it. And then when you open your eyes, try to keep the awareness in the inner body. And when you do this, you'll step out of that continuous stream of mental noise and you'll feel rooted within. This is pure aliveness. Now remember though, that as you go, the mind is gonna come back and tell you how important all of your worldly troubles are. That all this body stuff is just a useless waste of time. It can't mean anything. It's too simple. It's too easy. Where are the fireworks? I want fireworks. Fireworks are much cooler. They're so much more fun. But are you going to believe this? Or are you going to listen to your body? So next, um, I'd like to do um, a little meditation uh, for us that I've done uh, before. And... Um, so some of you have had done this, but this is a great meditation in allowing us and helping us to get into our bodies. Okay, so like one type of meditation is when you go through and you feel your feet and relax your feet and feel your legs and relax your feet. That's a good thing too. Um, so anyway, so let's just close our eyes. Again, if they're not already closed, get comfortable. And just start taking slow, deep breaths. And you're going to breathe in through your nose. Hold it briefly. And breathe out through your mouth. And you're going to want to breathe out a little bit more air than you breathe in. Breathing, slowing the breathing down. When we breathe and slow our breathing down consciously, allowing more air to go out than we breathe in. So like if you're counting, breathe in maybe to the count of four and breathe out to the count of six. This is telling our body it's okay to relax. Hold the breath on me out for a moment before inhaling. Allowing yourself to let go of all the troubles and worries of the day. Becoming more and more relaxed with every breath. Because all is peaceful and all is serene. And now, on the in-breath, see the breath coming into your chest, coming into your heart, and feel that love and gratitude in your heart as the breath flows in. And on the exhale, allow it to go out down your body, through your feet, into the very center of the earth, so you're feeling your heart on the inhale and feeling the love and gratitude. And on the exhale, you're feeling the rest of your body down to the tips of your toes and into the earth. So now just take a few breaths and feel that breath. As if the breath, as if your, your mouth is in your chest and you're breathing into your heart. And then exhaling down through your body into the earth. Feeling the body, accepting whatever you feel. And if something comes up and you want, you can just allow it to flow out your feet into the earth. 
with the breath like a river, washing those thoughts and tensions and pain and struggles down into the earth with the exhale. Just washing away, healing, soothing, balancing, feeling the entire body, all is peaceful and you are safe here in this space. You are extra safe when you go inside your body. If any memories come up, just acknowledge their old, worn out thoughts that you no longer need and just wash them out your feet into the earth, giving them back to the Pachamama where they can be mulched into life in the wonderful, beautiful circle of life. And now imagine yourself before a beautiful crystal palace. It's magnificent. You're here all by yourself, safe and sound. This is your safe place. As you walk up the stairs, the magnificent doors open for you and you walk into a grand chamber. So beautiful. So peaceful. Feel how this crystal palace just soothes and heals and balances your body. Feel it going into every cell of your body, every nook, every cranny bringing light in life. And before you is a beautiful golden pond with a ramp slowly going into the pond. And you start to walk down that ramp safe and sound as your feet go into the beautiful warm golden liquid and the liquid dissolves all of the worries and tensions of your physical body, healing, soothing, balancing, and your feet dissolve away, leaving only white light, the life force within you. As you walk in up to your knees, your calves disappear leaving only a white being below the fluid. And you continue to walk in up to your thighs, and your thighs, all of the tension in your thighs just dissolves away. Continuing the breathing. Low breathing is releasing, letting go. To the liquid, your lower torso dissolves away, leaving a being of light. As you look down in your mind's eye and see that life force, that being of light, your organs are all soothed, healed, bringing into balance with the earth, balance with yourself. Oneness with all that is. As you go in up to your lungs and your shoulders and your heart, everything just dissolves away. So peaceful. So relaxed. And the shoulders and the arms are under the fluid now. Shoulders, just let go of all the tension, just drooping down. Feeling so wonderful. Any discomfort in your body is washed away because it never really existed. 
You are whole now. You are whole. As the neck and your head starts go below the fluid and you breathe freely under this liquid because it's your light body that's breathing. And your entire head is now going under the liquid. Your entire body dissolves away your physical body, leaving only your light body. God eternal within the body. And from this place, take a moment to just feel such gratitude in your heart such compassion, such grace, appreciation for your life, for all that you are and all that you have. And this wonderful opportunity to experience life. Just take a moment and be with your life force, with your inner light. Continuing the slow breath into the heart. Now, it's time to start walking out of this beautiful golden liquid. But as you do, you've retained the light body. We are all luminous beings. We're all light beings. We're all one. All is peaceful. And all is serene as you're fully out of the liquid, out of the fluid. And you look down at yourself and just feel your body. Feel your feet. Feel that life force. You're feeling the light within. Still small voice within. And knowing that you can be in this space of consciousness anytime by just breathing into the heart or just bringing some of your attention into your body. Feel the body. And leave some attention in the mind is fine. As you not realize the mind is just like a small child. Can offer some great things and can do some wonderful things for booking reservations and fixing things and managing life and paying bills, but it's secondary in life. Primary in life is this feeling of peace within the body. This is your gateway to presence. God eternal within the body. The message our creator sent to us. God eternal within the body. And you walk, start to walk out the grand doors of your beautiful crystal palace knowing that you can come back here anytime you want. Down the front stairs, looking back at your beautiful place in awe, knowing this is inside of you and you can access these feelings anytime you bring your attention inside of your body and perhaps feel some gratitude or appreciation, just feeling grateful for life be with this perfect moment, this perfect presence. And come back into room awareness now. I'm gonna count to three and we'll be wide awake, feeling wonderful, inhabiting our body and our mind, feeling that presence deep within, that deep-rooted presence that anchors us and makes us sound 
beings of light, not a candle in the wind any longer like our minds would have us. We're solid beings of light, flexible like, like the wind and yet solid in our beliefs and solid in our footing in the earth and yet open to new ideas and growing. One, wiggle your fingers, starting to feel wonderful, feeling your body more, feeling the room around you, but also keeping some presence into your body. Two, taking a deep breath. And three, open your eyes wide awake. So the next time you get all worried about some worldly situation, remember that 2,000 year old message to the human race from someone or something far greater than us, someone that, that created us, whatever that might be for you, it doesn't matter. Just remember this message, God eternal within the body. Thank you. Thank Welcome you, Sandy. <laughs> As I kind of drift back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to open it up for a brief time for anyone who has any comments or questions. Thank you, Steve. You um, always do wonderful meditations. Thank you. You know, and it's just so fascinating, you know, when we think about this, that there's, you know, that whoever, whatever created us, there's a million different theories out there, right? Depending on your, whether it's a religious belief or a new age belief and but that they that they actually left us a message on how to come back home. I think that's kind of cool. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other thoughts or questions or anybody want to share anything that you experienced? Any anybody experienced anything new? There's just one thing that I was thinking about adding in. Um, as, as you say, there's so many different ways that we can label things and so many different names that could be used for uh, different parts of ourselves or different things that we can do. Um, okay. Okay. Okay, something's going on out there. Did you... Uh, okay. you yeah. Matter. Okay. I think I found it. Okay. Yeah. So the, the only thing that I was going to add is you had mentioned about when you go to sleep, if you think about the problem that you might be experiencing, your, your inner mind, um, that the body mind that you were talking about can solve the problem. And based off of what I know, I would just add in that not only do you want to think about the problem, you also want to think about what you would like to replace the problem and what outcome you want the body to create for you. And so that's the only thing I would add into that process of going to sleep. Just give give the starting condition and the end condition, the end that you want to, to produce, and then your inner mind will will work out how to connect the two. Yeah, great. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, nice addition. Other thoughts, questions, sharing? You know, I just I, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, real quick, um, when Steve does that meditation and he's done it before. Instead of the doors opening, I just walk right through them in the Crystal Palace. <laughs> right. Perfect. We don't need no stinking doors, right? 
Catherine, did you want to say something? Yes, I just wanted to say in TS or the Theosophical Society, uh, they said Darwin's theory was wrong, that man came first before ape. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and you know, it is the theory of evolution does work. It is there and they can prove it and they can do it in the test tube in laboratories today, but it doesn't explain how we came into being because it, it, the, the probability of something like that happening in terms of, you know, as they, as Darwin said, survival of the fittest, if you will, um, it, uh, it couldn't, it couldn't have happened, but they can, you know, produce bacteria and genes or, and mold and things by creating certain conditions, they can cause the mold to mutate, to evolve, if you will. So it does work in that regard, but it it it's different with humans. Definitely, is different with humans. Sandy, you know, did you want? Okay. <laughs> so let's do Leanne and then Sandy. How's that? Thank you. I was going to comment on the inner child on treating your mind like a petulant child. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and you get to parentify yourself, right? In mm -hmm. a way, when you think about it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and your higher your your higher spiritual being is your parent, right? Exactly. Yeah. So it, it all works out well for me. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was awesome. And I yeah. do have to run. Sorry. Have a nice day. Okay. okay thanks, Leanne. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah. And Sandy, you wanted to? Yes. Um, well, I just wanted to share. I I teach general somatic yoga, and which I've just been studying over the past about two and a half years. And it's a very embodied practice, you know, where we really connect to the body and the inner felt sensations and becoming grounded in the body. And, and that seems to be something I've been drawn to, led to, because it's, it's very different from the meditation practices and the other styles of yoga that I've practiced over the years. But um, I think it, it is very powerful to connect to those inner felt sensations. They refer to it as interoception, which is just another one of our senses, but it's like your internal nervous system, your breath, your heart rate, your digestive system, your maybe chills, goosebumps, that kind of thing. And, and so that your brain or can also start understanding things that are going on, your emotions and things like that by connecting to the body. So I, that's what I taught today in my class, two of my classes was that embodied awareness. And I love your, uh, your guided imagery, your, uh, I guess it's probably shamanic practice of going into the golden pool of water and bringing it up through you. Um, all the other techniques I've learned, we've always brought things down and through the body. So I enjoyed that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Great. So, Sandy, what's the name of that yoga practice again? It's called Gentle Somatic. Yoga, S O M A T I C. The person I study with is James Knight, K N I G H T. There's a lot of information out now on somatics and uh, becoming grounded, connected to the earth is part of it. Um, and I, I like to go out and do actual grounding, I do some of the practice out standing in the grass barefoot, which is another way to really ground yourself to the earth, ground yourself in your body and to your sensations. So, mm -hmm. Thank you. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, sometimes if you're just feeling like the world is overwhelming, you can just go lay face first in the dirt and just breathe <laughs> in that dirt and just yeah. let, let all that overwhelmingness just flow in, out of you. And it's amazing how well it does, like what Sandy was saying. That's I do that not too often, but if you have a dog, you have to be careful where you lay down, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a problem. I had a 
friend that had a candle in a little metal you know, container. And on the top, it said dirt. And I thought, huh, I opened it up. Sure enough, it smelled like dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where she got it, but no. that would work. There you go. There you go. Yeah. No, but, um, you know, I've always, uh, I always like to do yoga uh, before I meditate. And, um, you know, because I'm kind of stiff in my, you know, my lower, my hips and back are always stiff. So when I do the yoga, it actually kind of hurts a little to do those stretches. You know, I'm one of those guys I have never been able to touch my toes in my entire life. And uh, um, so that's really good, though, because that does bring me into the body because you just go and you be with that, that stretch, that stretching. It's not really pain. It's just that stretching feeling, I guess we could call it, right? And, so it's really, I, I highly recommend doing the yoga for anybody, uh, but, you know, as a way to step into that place of power before you meditate. Yeah, good stuff. So how, how about you, Barbara? Good evening. Good evening. I was a little late getting here. Sorry. <laughs> oh, perfectly good. Yeah. So each time you put me into a meditation, you hypnotize me some way and, and it takes me a few extra minutes to come out of it. <laughs> I think you I think one time I actually kind of woke up and everybody was gone. And it's like the, the leader had closed the session or something and it's like, what? <laughs> I I seem to conk out completely for some reason. Yep. That's good. Well, yeah, your body needs it. You know, that's a good thing. Your body needs that deep rest. But but you do a very good job of hypnotizing me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I keep There's wondering some... what, what my inner consciousness is hearing when I'm not aware of it. You know, there's something. I'm sure there's a lesson that's being learned there. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. And remember, we don't need to figure it out. We just need to be with it. Right? Because figuring out is of the mind. Um. But something else I wanted to share uh, with the group, there's um, something that, I don't know, has anyone ever heard of Dr. Huberman? So he's a, he's a modern day doctor and he kind of blends uh, spirituality with doctors, AMA. So he's kind of like, it. he blends spiritual and AMA, but he does it at a professional level. So he created something called Non-Sleep Deep Rest. NSDR. So if you go to YouTube or just Google NSDR, it will come up and his name is Dr. Huberman. And um, he's really fascinating uh, because he talks about a lot of different things. Um, but what he does is he takes the spiritual side of things and he take, turns it into doctor talk. So he makes it professional, which is really good because that way then doctors. So this non sleep depressed is really what's called yoga mudra, yoga nudra. Nidra, N-I-D-R-A, yes, yeah. N-I-D-R-A, nidra, yoga Yeah, nidra. which is, is, again, it's a it's a yoga nidra, which is a method of coming into the body. And there's a there's a young lady uh, who does that on YouTube. Her name is Allie. Um, oh yeah, there you go, thank you. Thank you, Alan. Alan just put in the chat a link you could click on and, and for later. And um, yeah, so basically he took yoga nidra and he, he put some medical terms around it. And so that doctors, so I, I like him though. And he's got different ones. He's got a 10 minute one, he's got a 20 minute one. So if you've just got 10 minutes, you just put it on, you lay down and he just walks you through the body and has you do some breathing. Basically, you know, it's the same breathing that people have been doing for thousands of years to go into a peaceful state. And um, so he's really good. And then uh, the Yoga Nidra is another one that you could look up, which more is more in the area of, um, you know, more of the meditation type stuff. So they're both very good ways if you wanted to do something where you wanted to go through a guided tour. Is that the uh, Yoga Nidra one? Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. And there is a, a lady in her name. I think she's Allie, I believe her name is that. She has a really nice, peaceful voice. But anyway, so those are a couple things that you could do if you wanted to do some more work with this. 
Okay, you're good. If you've been listening to the news at all, you may need it. <clears throat> if you've been listening to the news at all, you might really need it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I haven't, luckily, so I'm good. <laughs> so, all right, well, is there any other questions or feedback? Anybody want to share anything? Yeah. I just have one thing that I want to <laughs> to invite everyone to because I I was kind of into the whole introduction thing, but on Thursday we are having um, we are having a workshop but led by Fred Stella on affirmations, why they work and why they don't work. So um, if that sounds like something of interest to you, Wednesday night at seven o'clock Eastern time. Um, Is it Thursday? Right, Thursday, excuse me. Thank you. Misspoke. I'm, I'm still kind of out there in drifty land. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday night, um, join us for Fred's workshop. And for those of you that don't know Fred, he's an amazing, amazing guy. Um, he's very active in the Hindu temple in Grand Rapids. And um, actually, uh, he just, I just was emailing him today. He just got back from India. He was invited to speak before like 55,000 people uh, at a, a, a World Peace Conference in India representing the American Hindu Foundation. So he's quite up there. He's, he spoke right before the vice president of, of India, the whole country. So he's, he's, a, he's a very famous international speaker. And um, I'd highly recommend taking his workshop if you, if you can, because he's, he's, he's very entertaining too. He's, he's great. So... Anyway, just my little commercial. We we all love Fred. He's a great guy. So good. All right. Well, then I'll turn it back over to you, Darcy, for closing. Well, thank you. Thanks so much, Steve. Obviously, <laughs> people were very engaged in what you what you had to share this evening, and gave us a lot of um, food for not thought, <laughs> food for the heart. Right. <laughs> Perfect. But thank you all for coming. Um, we, we appreciate your presence and your energy and coming to coming to these experiences on Tuesday night. I do hope that you'll um, you'll look at the website and see what we have coming up. I, Alan is here and he will be speaking on May 14th. And so you can join us for that talk and the new moon. Um, the new, new moon meditation is on the 7th. And so there will be more programming Tuesday night. We usually have something, unless it's a holiday or close to a holiday, we have something every Tuesday night. So please um, take a look at the Coptic website to find out more about that. And thank you for being here this evening. Have a wonderful night. Yes. Oh, one, one more thing. Uh, yes. Since Thursday night with Fred is a workshop, that yes. does require a separate registration. So you yes. do have to register to get that link. Um, so just that Thanks for that clarification, on, Steve. Yes. On this Tuesday thing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. So yeah, go ahead. No, you have to go and register for that. So thank you for that reminder. Yes. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Nice okay. to see you all. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, thank for you. coming. Have a, you have a wonderful thank evening. Till next time.